Uh, that's because there wasn't any sound up in the uh, in the start of the game at all. So, oh no. <laughs> which is which is so, <laughs> the bane of everyone's existence is just my voice being all nasally with a stream starting soon hi everyone how are you doing what's going on what's happening what's happening hey. what happened what, what, what? <laughs> what did happen hello check 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 m and m check wonderful good 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 can you hear us I'm prepared. Oh, whoa, how well? Oh, oh, shit, son. When they cracking out the fireball, we haven't even, like, made any rolls yet. <laughs> I'm prepared. No, actually, my old co-workers gave this. Uh, I mean, I'm prepared. Oh, Magno juice. Magno <laughs> <laughs> juice. It's my ass. No, but, you have to say suck my ass, not eat my ass. I say <laughs> suck all. Suck my whole oh. ass. Well, hello everyone, and welcome to the first stream of our new campaign. I don't know what we're calling it yet, so it will be up to you guys, I guess. Ham piggin. Ham piggin. Ham piggin. Ham piggin. The fiercest of foes. Yeah, but name the campaign. Name so the we campaign. don't. We don't have well, anything terrible. My other campaign is. Dungeons and Daddy issues, so it can't get worse. <laughs> oh my god, is that a challenge accepted? Mamas and Melodies, that's this one. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's, let's ruin some lives. I'm ready to ruin some lives, mainly my own. Oh. Um, well, welcome, everyone. Don't be too rude. Yes, welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for everyone who stopped in to join us tonight. I am Drag of the Cats. I am your host and Dungeon Master tonight. Uh, thank you to everyone who's come, who, who have come on in. I see we have Joygasm with the host, Hissy, Will Avery, Marv. Uh, Marv is Todd. I Todd. know, I'm just, ex <laughs> I'm just <laughs> acknowledging the guys, follow. We okay? <laughs> I'm trying to be polite. Thank you, Todd. <laughs> Paul G, thank you. Takua16 <laughs> had the loaf as followed. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, Thanks, Todd. Thank you. Mwah. Uh, I'm Dragons of Cats. Uh, we're here tonight. New campaign. Uh, let's go around one by one by one and have a little introduction for our players and our and who they're going to be playing tonight. So let's start off with any mini money. Let's go with Todd. Uh, hi everyone. I am Todd, also known as Marv or M -m 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 Marv, if you want to go by my Twitter name. If I, <laughs> <laughs> um, I am an artist and a game developer and today i am playing uh dane who is a uh gold dwarf paladin uh oath of redemption uh and he's he is a, a guardian of ill nature and serves the triad so i'm excited to play him nice 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 with us also tonight i'll definitely just from now on i'll just go by the twitter names i'll just go by the twitter. i feel like that's gonna be a bit more fun. but uh, with us also tonight is Cat Roulette. Hello. Sorry, I'm just I'm just hosting. Oh, thank you for hosting. <laughs> thank you. Uh, you're so welcome. Stop it. Stop it. We've got a <laughs> kitty cam happening soon for Sam's game. Uh, yeah. So tell us about who you're playing tonight and who you are. I am Cat Roulette or Jimmy. I'm uh, an artist and cosplayer uh, and. I don't know, do I do anything else? Ah, oh, a dog guardian. I have a dog who's more popular than I am. Um, she's down here, but you can't see her and I'm not going to show you. Um, I'm playing uh, Adinafe or Adinafe. I haven't decided yet because I haven't played her yet. Um, she is a, what is she? Planet Horizon Walker Ranger and Urban Bounty Hunter. She is here to fuck some shit up. Mostly Dane's Day. <laughs> well, it's to be expect expected. Yeah. All right. With us also tonight is our wonderful, wonderful friend Scarlet Moth. Hello, it's me. It's Moth. I'm an artist, a cosplayer, D and D player, and lover, and tiefling aficionado. I'm not playing a tiefling for once, so. I'm uh, broadening my horizons. 
I'm playing Solosia or Sia, the Fire Genasi monk. She is good at punching, bad at flirting, all around disaster. I love her. And I hope that you will love her too. Or at least not hate her, so. <laughs> Please don't hate. <laughs> Haters step off. <laughs> With us also tonight is at Alicia Era. Yes, hello. <laughs> Alishiera, close. Not not too bad. Um, hello, I'm Alishiera. I am a uh well like kind of cosplayer still, kind of streamer still, kind of smack talker still. I kind of just exist a lot at the moment, but I'm getting to the end, hopefully next week or the week after. So I'll be Same. back to being like proper schedule soon because I haven't streamed since twenty eighteen. I think you could just describe yourself as Morrowind aficionado. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd go with that. Like, that's a pretty, pretty sick game. Know a lot about it. Um, tonight I'll be playing Asphyxia, who is a uh, Raven Queen Warlock Hellborn um, and uh, part of the Antisocial Social Club. And yeah, she just kind of, you know, does her own thing. She exists. She's a thing. And she looks very fancy. She uh, definitely is herself an aficionado on fashion because damn son she's got a robe and a half going for her yeah wonderful and finally we have uh viridian knight hi i'm viridian knight if you are not a stranger to the channel you've probably seen me around pop up here and there i am not really anything i just kind of an an enigma that like exists on the internet at the moment I'm not really doing anything, um, but what I am doing is playing D&D, &D. and tonight I am, well, for this campaign, I am playing uh, Ophelia Roserob, who is a half-orc, half-tiefling, who was raised by Nidha and was raised by halflings. So she is big, she is quite scary looking, but very... Very, has a very homely heart. So. She's my wife now is what so she wholesome. is. <laughs> she She's is my wife. a lumberjack lesbian. She nice. is in the flannels all the time. I love her. Nice. But yes, also, I did not say her class, which might be important. She's <laughs> the barbarian path of the ancestral guard. So, yeah. That one's me. Yeah, nice. <laughs> all right, and... I'm Dragons of Cats. I'm going to be your DM. Um, and I'm here tonight to try to send these wonderful people onto a fantastic journey while my CPU is going to shit. But <laughs> we will make up with that and go from there while I just close my task. Close a lot of the things in Task Manager. Close that Chrome. <laughs> Closing that. Man, they need it. Also, while while you're uh, fixing up your CPU issues, let's uh, get everyone in the chat to wish uh, Mr. Dragons Are Cats Kyle a happy birthday. Yay. Because it's his birthday. Yay. His birthday. Happy birthday. birthday. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, yes. He's it old. Is... Oi. <laughs> I could say it. Oi, but you don't have to. But, <laughs> but they can. <laughs> Damage is done. <laughs> I mean, what better way to celebrate your birthday than starting a new D and D campaign? Look, yeah, to, agree. Like, to be honest. To All be this honest. is just one big April Fool's joke, and we're not actually starting a campaign. <laughs> we're just gonna talk shit for like three hours. <laughs> <Can't believe laughs> I mean, is this that's the, that's the prime D and D campaign? It's right there. It's yeah. Right there. Thank you, everyone, in chat for the birthday wishes. Thank you so, 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 so much. Um. Oh, thank you, thank you for the, oh wow, thank you, Ooh. thank oh, you wow. for the subs, general. Thank you, my wife. That is our wife. That's our stream wife. She <laughs> that's, our, this... that's my stream wife. Yes, <laughs> very much so. Thank you. Hell yeah. Welcome to the Nip Club. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the Nipper Club. Uh, I don't know where my nippers are. Actually, they're right here. So. so I thought so. you said something completely different. No. <laughs> nipple, yeah. nipple Club. <laughs> okay, it's not the Nipple Club. We're not doing the Nipple Club. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag yeah, nipple bot. If we got players, like, welcome to the nipple club. <laughs> That's our party name now. Nipple club. <laughs> oh 
Oh god. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sanro. You are a legend. Mwah. You are a legend. Is that like gonna be our band in the game? Like Dane and the Nips? <laughs> Dane and the Nips. <laughs> Da -da -dang and the Dane and the female <laughs> presenting nipple. <laughs> <laughs> oh That's so good. I'm just like not gonna actually attempt to drink any liquids during this game because I will spill like. Oh, I'm struggling oh, already. Yeah. <laughs> oh god, what are we gonna do with this? All right. <laughs> so, shall we start this wonderful D and D campaign? Yay! While I bring up. As I read, now read my notes off my phone. Just to free everything up. Alright, so. It looks like the video is doing a bit better now, so. Yeah, it works. Mine was frozen for a bit, but now it seems okay. That's cool. Yeah. I have no idea what's going on with my stream. But it's, actually, this is the first time I've done it on this computer. Mm. Yeah, so Ooh. this is a, this is a passing test. Passing test. So. Our, our game takes place in the magical realm of Faerun, along the Sword Coast. As we travel on through the clouds and zoom in to a little river town called Nightstone. Nightstone is a quite illustrious and notorious holiday destination for a large number of nobles, kings and queens, dukes and duchesses from across across the land who come here for a wonderful escape from the big city and from all uh, from all duty. Over the summer, however, its doors open up to the public to a high summer festival celebrating the solstice that has recently just passed. Now, this party has this party is a three day party where our some of our characters have decided to visit over that time. We have a dwarf making his way from Daggerford, his hometown, all the way up to Nightstone, which is a only a two day journey away. We also have a fire Jumanji heading down from Waterdeep following the party line <coughs> with the rest of the social scene. We have a we have a talk making her way from her uh, from her little family hamlet to get to market to see what wonders of the world exist. And we have a bounty hunting duo. One a mystics one a mystic of the far r lower plains, the other of the underdark comes to surface. I'm getting there, you little butt. <laughs> there we go. I need far less dabbing already, like just toned down <laughs> dabbing. No, less. I said less dabbing. I, I made Joygasm da dab at his wedding. I will make you dab. <laughs> Dab for me, my angels of music. <laughs> dab for me! <laughs> yes, dab, dab away. Dabberino. Alright, yeah, sorry about that stream. Um, Soft-spoken just because I'm trying to keep the nerves down. Shh. <laughs> so. As our scene begin, as our adventure begins, this is not where we're going to start. The... Prologue for our campaign is that of a mountainside cliff on a rainy day overlooking a vast valley. <laughs> dab, Dane, dab. Yes, dab. This valley is surrounded by calms that stem out of the ground, rising into the air or out of the forest. Two figures in cloaks, wearing, one wearing all black, the other a hat, a half coat, and long brown trousers. Both hold big irons, big irons at their side, with the rain pitter-patters on, the one dark cloak 
has his hand at his side, his fingers twitching and trembling. Both draw the big iron from their sides. The one left standing, the all in black. Oh my god, it's fucking <laughs> sleeve! <laughs> sleeve McDonald's! <laughs> Begin the the fallen in the cowboy hat and the brown brown coat and trousers begin to crawl and walk away, growing in pain as the black cloaked figure. <laughs> what I tell you, brother, you can't get me. And from side profile, the gun pointed out. He raises his arm. His sleeve drops to reveal on his, on the back of his hand, a draconic mark. The scene cuts to a wonderful celebration <laughs> of a barrel Don't being leave. placed. <laughs> his sleeve, dead. Well, howdy. <laughs> being placed howdy. on the back, uh, uh, moving from the from the front of a wagon howdy. to the back. <laughs> so then a. Uh, another hand coming to grab it with a similar draconic mark grabbing it, uh, grabbing under the barrel and lifting it up. <clears throat> Heavy groan from this fire genasi as she unloads this uh, this barrel of ale from the back of this wagon heading towards the tavern in this small little village. Heading towards uh, the, she heading towards the tavern, dodging and ducking in and between people. See ya. You will come into the illustrious hall of uh, the illustrious hall of the Nightstone Tavern. You've been here for a couple of days, making sure the celebration is ready and up to kick off. The Shield Dwarf looks you up and over, uh, Morak, Morak Ergre, the owner of this establishment. The party hasn't even begun for day one. And already it is filled to the brim with patrons enjoying ale, wines, and fire whiskey. You place a barrel of fire whiskey down behind the bar. Gives you a, bit, a little bit of a nod. And says, well, they have great service. Thanks for bringing that down. Here's, uh, here's the rest of that payment. Oh, thank you. Well, I can say it was no trouble. I'm always happy to help when it's a party involved. And uh, can we can we crack open the, any of this um, fire whiskey yet? I mean, it's just probably. Uh, I checked the back of the ca of the caravan wagons. Might be one more out there. I, I'm, I'm sure I ordered one more than these. If you do not mind. Sure, sure. Rush back over. <laughs> Rushing back over, going on outside. I'd like you to make me a dexterity saving throw. Oh fuck's sake, already? <laughs> yes. Oh no! Time to eat shit. <laughs> I'm ready to eat shit. <laughs> Could be worse. Hmm. It was an eleven. An eleven? Yep. On eleven, as you come around the corner, out the back of the tavern, heading around from the alley back towards the caravan, uh, you're in too much of a rust to to realize you have just. Uh, shoulder checked into a large form and have gone sprawling down onto the ground. Now the ground's become a little bit muddy just from the footpaths, uh, the foot track that's been coming down. Uh, you look up and you see um, what could only be described as a half orc tiefling combination. <laughs> if you could describe yourselves to each other. Um. So you said it was sort of night. It was like getting late. Ah, uh, no, it's morning. Oh, it's morning. Yes. Well, yeah. She probably. I don't think there's many half orc tieflings walking around. She probably just looks like a weird tiefling. Out of anything, um, yeah. She'll just sort of bend down and go to help her. It's like, are you all right? Uh, I'm. I'm. I am so. I am so sorry. Um, I am so sorry. So there's this orange-skinned, quite like lithe Janasi who's picking her herself up off the ground now, quite muddy, suddenly. 
and she has hair which sort of goes from an an ashen root and becomes orange and almost seems to end in embers at the end and they're just sort of flaring up a bit as she's all flustered like uh i'm i'm so sorry i was in a rush i was in a rush just to um help you are all good trust me you're fine (laughs) are you you're not injured you're not hurt uh Oh no, my hand. You seem... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, she'll sort of take take her hand and sort of, it's like, oh, it doesn't look like any sort of fracture that I've seen. Um, uh, I think, I think it's, it's mainly just, just bruised my, bruised my ego. Oh, ah, uh, uh, that's nothing to worry about. No, I'm. I'm so sorry, Miss. Uh, what What was your name? Philia. Philia Roserend. Pleasure. I love her. <laughs> 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 and um, sorry. Your name is. Oh, that's a real pretty name. Uh oh, I'm I'm Celosia. You can you can call me Sia. Oh. Most people just. Now that name's prettier than mine, for sure. Um, is there anything I can do to help you clean up? You sure there's nothing I can do? Uh, I should see I will just dust herself down. Really, I think that I, I just need to... Oh, no. I need to get going because I have to help finish setting up the party and I need to get another bottle, another barrel of ale out of the cart and... Uh, I, can, I can help if you want me to. I've I've set up my little market. Uh, I've got a little kiosk over there. Um, I have people helping me set up. If there's anything I can help you with, I'll be more than happy to help you. It's the least I can do after getting your clothes dirty. Uh, that that would be. You would that you would that would be wonderful. If sure. you could, thank yeah, you. Yes, definitely. Um, you said you have a casket a veil somewhere a barrel yeah it's just over in the wagon over here i can definitely help with that and um if yeah if sia shows her she'll sort of yeah. pick up is is it I'm, i imagine it's pretty easy for Ophelia to to lift up yeah for Ophelia, it's real easy work it's just yeah she yeah. probably has it like over her shoulder i think it just sort of was there anything else Oh, just this one. It, is she showing her muscles? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like holding the barrel, so she's sort of flexing a little bit. Oh, uh, I don't, I don't think, I think that was the last one. Um, where are we taking this to? Oh, just back into the hall back there. Gotcha. Show me the way. Oh, she'll point it out and say, I'll just I'll just check the back of the wagon to make sure there's nothing else in there. Ah, sure, I'll just head right in. And she'll walk off and put the Gonna watch her walking off. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you watch her walking off. You go down around the side of the uh Down around the side of the tavern into the back door, uh, which is behind the bar. Inside there is a shield dwarf. Now you know the shield dwarf, uh, Maro. She's giving you, uh, giving you and your fam, family, uh, multiple, multiple uh, free tasters previously in the past, uh, especially for Shelty when you travelled here through the years. Sorry, what was the what was her what was their name? Morak. Morak. Um, she will sort of nod her head. Morning, Morak. And she looks at you and goes, Oh, Philia. Hello. Mm. Um, seems like one of your help needed some help, so I was just bringing in this last barrel. You see her on the table, and she's counting uh, counting out some coins just uh, away from the crowd, facing the... <laughs> oh, no. That's wonderful. The bane of the TDH. All right. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, you see a counting coins. You see probably about five gold pieces, 20 silvers. Mm-hmm. Just sort of, Aphelia will, like, take note of the money, but not, not really. Um, she'll be like, is there anything else you need help with? No, no, that's, that's all. You've done, you've done, you've done enough. That's the reason why we get hired help. You just sit back and enjoy the celebration. If I can ask you something, where did you get that genasi from? Oh, not too sure. Um, not too sure. You have to ask it yourself. I just this is just part of. I think she's just one of the guards for Steve and his caravan. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Doesn't look like any guard I've ever seen, but you know this is probably the most civilized place I've been in a long time. Well, she well hiring uns uh, unskilled guards usually a bit better than. Iron skilled guards, but buy buy none of them. That's that's true. Anyway, I'll let you go about your business. I've got some patrons to to make happy. Now we've got all this, and she slaps the barrel. Yeah, it looks like you uh, you're ready for the festival. It's just it's just gonna be three days of drinking. It's gonna be fine. Um, well, I hope they still got something to. Spend after all that drink. I've got a few wares I'd love to sell. Well, just wait till the market booms out this afternoon. I'm sure everybody will be here by then. Just uh, do me a favor, sweet. Just stay in the sit. Just stay in the village. In ah, uh, you'll you'll see it out the front. There's a uh, there's been people going missing the last couple of days, last couple of months. <laughs> and you didn't tell anyone until the festival. Why? You'll you have to t you'll have to take that up with the lady, of course, Lady Nada. Yeah, like I'm gonna talk to a lady. Do I look like someone who talks <laughs> to a lady? Do I look like someone? No, I just I just send alcohol up there. No, that's all I do. Anyway, I won't Excuse keep. Excuse me, you are a lady of this town. She blushes at that and just goes, <laughs> "You are too sweet. Trust me." Well. I might check on that um see ya. I think her name was um she seems like she took a little bit of a fall and just want to make sure she said she might have injured her wrist or her hand or something just gonna check up on her Do you go if on there's now. anything you need you know I'm just right outside well she's outside and you're gonna go see her here you go and she uh scoots the money back into the leather pouch ties it up and just goes give that to her to, uh, to, her, to the rest of her payment will do thank you darling see ya you and um yeah for real sort of walk outside and try and find um see ya do i do i do i see see ya anywhere <laughs> do you see ya she Sia was uh, staying quiet in an attempt to hide herself in the wagon. And she's sort of just in the wagon, dusting herself off and trying to clean her robes as best she can now. Uh, so embarrassing. Um, miss? Uh, you back out here? Yeah, just dusting myself off. Uh... Well, um, I've I've got the rest of your payment. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, she'll sort of, um, may you all good in the wagon? She'll hop out now. Yeah, there, there weren't any more barrels. There was nothing else left behind. And Always good to double check. I've left home so many times without making sure I had everything. And then by the time I get here, it's just like, what can you do? Um, by the way, this is yours. And she'll sort of place a pouch in her hand. Thank you. That's, uh... Oh, I know. I know this tavern more than uh, most where you usually come visit. Well, I hope to know this tavern very soon. <laughs> you a bit of a drinker? Uh, a little bit. 
I, I had a bit of a sheltered upbringing, so I'm... I, ah, I, rebellious. <laughs> Completely <laughs> understand. Yeah. Tell you what, to repay you for making you fall over, how about I buy you your first drink tonight? Oh, you don't have to do that. Anything you want, don't worry. Well, if there's anything a bit spicier I'll, on the menu, I'll definitely take that. Good. I know, well, I know, some, I know some great party tricks. Well, I'm not really used to party tricks. I can just drink a lot, but be interesting to learn some. Tell you what, how about we meet here later tonight? I gotta finish up my stall, and we'll have a drink or two together. Uh, 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 okay, that would be. You, that would be wonderful, yes. Well, sounds sounds wonderful. I'll see you later tonight then. All good? Yes. It, it was lovely to meet you, uh, Philia. Oh, it's lovely to meet you too, see? You seem like such a wonderful character. I can't wait to get to know you more. And she'll sort of walk off and head to her market store. Is that... Are there any other wagon guards around? Uh, by you, no. Uh, there is a temple, um, probably about forty feet to this from where the uh, wagon came in, and there's a couple of guards at the watchtower, not too far from where you are. There are also some dogs. <laughs> there's also two dogs in the background who are barking. Uh, is there anyone else around? Nope. Other than there, there's people passing by, but no one is really t paying any attention in this kind of uh, street that goes up and around um, the back area of the moat side village. She's gonna grab a passerby and it's like, "Did she just ask me on a date? Is that what that was? <laughs> Tell me." You grab this dwarf. Dang, oh. a tiefling has just grabbed you on your way to the oh. temple. Ah, I'm, I'm, not, Darcy. Oh. I'm not tiefling. <laughs> oh, fire genasi. I'm so sorry. Default. <laughs> uh, 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 I, I didn't fully quite catch the conversation. Uh, I cannot honestly answer that. I'm unsure. I'm terribly sorry. Ah! <laughs> uh, if it's all right, I have matters to attend to and I hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> you zip and zoom away from her to the temple where you've been requested for and as you head into uh in through the open double doors of this temple you see uh completely made out of wood decorated decorated to Lathanda, the god of dawn and Mileki, the goddess of the sorrow uh goddess of the forest it has a slender steeple containing a large bronze bell at the top uh, and a stained glass windows along its side that depict images of uh, birth, the dawning sun, trees, and unicorns. When you arrive here, the front door is completely swung open, and there is a human with scruffy, bro uh, scruffy brown hair, but he has he's got that fryer, he's got that fryer tuck, uh, Devon patch at the top. It's, Elderly, elderly acolyte is talking to a guard and is and just looking at and is tapping his foot and being like, oh, it's, about, "It's about damn time you showed up here." I've been, I've been waiting. <sighs> God, yeah, I'm real, really annoyed about. I need to have a word with the lady for always constantly hiring out guards. This is such a <sighs> taking time. Time is precious right now. Do you know what's being taken? What's being stolen? I'm sorry, but I don't. Could you elaborate? Someone has broken in this morning and has taken a totem of my leaky, of the forest. Oh. Oh, did. And looks to the garden, and the guard is a young, is a pretty young man, tan skin, and he's just like, uh, uh, he's just like, oh, where do I get boys like this? So honestly, honestly, someone has broken in. Read it through my bedroom. Come, come have a look. And he takes you into the temple. Um, sunlight falls through this, uh, the high-vaulted chamber, through four stained glass windows on the sides. Uh, yep. 
and takes you up into the back of it. As you head on into the into this back area, past the little kitchen, uh, well, a little kitchenette that then leads into a bedroom, you see that this back room contains a plain wooden bed uh, with a picture of this man above the bed, this man you're talking to. So he's got a little... Well, he knows oh, his own opinion. Okay, all right. Yeah, he's got a he's got a portrait of himself up there. Yeah, okay. Looking holy. Yeah, good. Uh, you see, the floor is strewn with uh, contents of the two wooden chests that's in the room, along with the, the tall boys. That all their drawers have been pulled out and thrown, uh, thrown around the place. It's a complete mess. It's like someone has been through my personal effects. They left. I can't believe they were here and they were after this one thing. They were after the totem. This is a holy icon of my leaky and it is ours and I want it back. I know people have been going missing these months, but this is more important. Uh, would you care to tell me when you believe this happened? It happened today! Uh, it, when? Within the last hour or so. I don't know. I was in prayer. I was, okay. well, I was, in, I was in the pulpit. Okay. I, was giving, I was giving counsel. Okay. Someone has come uh, in while I was in there, and someone has stolen it. Very well. I will attend to this and do my best to see it resolved. Thank you. Good day. And it, he uh, turns and he sees a couple of members, uh, a couple of members of the village, just looking at him and just being like, "Oh my god." the the, the acolyte is yelling and just complete disdain like uh, it's like <coughs> no, you have to excuse me there's just been some holy minutes as, as he's trifling off uh, to these villages right yeah um so there's just random other villages around in the temple uh yes you do see that there are two other villages at the moment uh there is a elderly woman and then there is a father and a son just in a in a in one of the rows of the pews just far back from there, and they're just having a good old prayer. And you hear the elderly elderly woman thanking uh, my lady for everything they've given us over the years. And the man and the son uh, just having a good old good old prayer. Um, is there anyone else like uh, who works for the temple like around? Uh, currently, no. It's just it's just this acolyte. Just him. Good. Just him. Glad. Um. Yeah. All right. Cool. I have nothing to go on. Uh. So. <laughs> I'm gonna go look for clues. I guess. Okay. <laughs> make make an investigation check and tell me yeah. what you get. <sighs> what am I reduced to? A lowly detective. God. Um, six. I got a six. Six. It takes you. Dane is a shit <laughs> After this happened, this is when the uh, drawbridge the drawbridge opens to the majority of the populace waiting outside to come on in. It's like a day, like festival day one. The gates open. And there's already a line. There's a small caravan tent city down on the other side of the moat, where. Uh, people have formed their own little society, and as they all begin to flood in and go to and go to market, bards begin to play. The windmill, uh, just not too far down from the temple itself, begins to uh, it stops swinging as some oh, fantastic bagpiping it starts going on <laughs> real rocking bagpipes <laughs> some celtic music then begins playing as uh some bars have come in and claimed the the central uh obsidian obelisk in the middle of the square and have just begun to play that so that everyone can hear their music who are going through the central square and the market making sure that they are known multiple stalls are set up there are also stalls have been set up all throughout the rest of the village itself you do however after having a bit of a look around you come across a a uh, poster sign a 
a sign out the front of the tavern. Now it's got uh, multiple notices, including um, five uh, five missing people, uh, posters from five missing residents, um, warnings about venturing into the woods, and to report dwellers. Written in in quite harsh bold to uh, be reported to the Stone Guard, and you know the Stone Guard is the uh, Local authority from the keep. Yep. Um, apart from the red lady with hair on fire, mm -hmm. was there anyone else that looks suspicious that Dane has seen since he's been here? Uh, make a perception check. Perception? Right. Hmm. Ah, perception, my other weakness. Oh, good. Eight. <laughs> Eight. I have eyes. <laughs> nope, no eyes. Just due to your stature and the majority of people being uh, <laughs> humans and elves coming on through, um, there are the minority of uh, of the people in Nightstone are, uh, are halflings or elves, but humans have been ruling the roost here for a while. Especially yep. with the guards, you're just like, I, if it's an effort and futility in trying to find out anything more, or even looking around, or just trying to. Look for this. So the only person who seemed any bit out of the ordinary was the one who shook me and asked me if she was going on a date later. <laughs> Why? <laughs> yes, but you do see. Now, with that perception check, you don't. You're too smart yeah. for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> as day one draws to, to a close as uh, the afternoon comes on by, walking up the uh, drawbridge of Nightstone, coming to the two watchtowers that flank the entrance of the village, forming a gatehouse of sorts. You see each uh, asphyxia and fey, you see that each tower is covered with colourful streamers and flowers that have been laced through the chains as well. There is a cat that meows off in the distance. <laughs> wanting, uh, yearning to be picked up. Oh <laughs> boy. A banner between the two towers shows a wonderful tapestry in common calligraphy that states, Welcome to Solstice. A sign is then hung up to the side from there with festival rules uh, stating, Or children must be accompanied by an adult, no underage drinking, weapon and weapons and magic must remain stowed, and a note put, a uh, notepad um, of the code legal hangs up beside it you see uh, that there are three guards that are singing around a low table by the gate entrance and with all the foot traffic coming in and out you can tell that they are definitely themselves having a couple of wines coming into the square at the center of this open graveled area is an eight foot tall two foot wide obelisk of uh of a mixture of obsidian and lapis. The Nightstone, the town so famously known for it. Surrounding, the square, surrounding it in the square has been transformed into a busy market with multiple caravan wagons and stores set up selling all sorts of exotic wares, silks, spices, meats, plants, cloves, jewelry, and accessories from across the land have been gathered here today and put on display by wealthy merchants for tourists to come and have their due at wealth as their prices have been pretty well slashed for this event you see art and hobbies of all kinds are on display here there is there is even someone there is even a crier calling out all contestants for the archery contest must be be submitted to a Stone guard by the end of the day. Grand prize is an art from the Misty Forest. I repeat, grand prize art of the Mist Forest. You hear another uh, town, see another, you hear another of someone else yelling out Wrestling contest! Come and re see what you got. Let me, let's test what you're made of. Come and wrestle with us. 
and you see that there's some halflings down by their uh, little cottage who have turned their backyard and flower bed. Um, all the flowers have basically have basically uh, grown out to the side of this one long um, stem of ground that has become a horseshoe throwing contest. And pe and there's a there's some people having a good old play, some people having some bets. The main thing you you notice, however, is the other than the odd uh, black and blue stone that takes the center of the uh, of the square is the is the pub, the local inn. Mm, I have burps. <laughs> Excuse me. Birthday burps. Mm. Maybe you shouldn't be drinking so much, guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just ate two schnitzels. <laughs> I want two schnitzels. Double gravy, baby. It's good. <laughs> Coming back up. You see, out <laughs> front of. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, stream. How you doing? Sorry. <laughs> That's not a joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. And the memes have hit. And the memes are here. They're here to stay. You see, uh, this inn has a wrought iron sign um, bearing the inn's name that hangs out of the entrance. Uh, inside, you uh, even from afar, you see that the tavern is al alive with celebrations. Uh, there is lute and harp music coming from within inside, and you see there is a half elven woman carrying around a pot with a ladle apparently filling up people's bowls at their at tables with sh what's it what smells like potato stew the other th thing you notice is uh a poster board outside five missing persons five missing residents from there there's one thing you uh you notice asphyxia as you see it just you sent you feel it really as you look down the street and just pop your head around the corner you can see that there is a house completely covered in infernal writing looks to be uh, scratched into the wood around the house and then uh, marked up deeper with chalk as you can read infernal you see that it says, where did I find it? It says Todd was here. <laughs> Unfortunately, it does not. It says Todd was here, but it also says, uh, let all who enter this home without permission, with the consent of the owner, burn for 99 years in the depths of Nessus and freeze for a thousand more in the icy wastes of Kenya. They seem nice. <laughs> Nice. Quite nice. Once you get past the fire and pain, it's quite nice. <laughs> it's a it's a really nice uh, three bedroom bungalow, yeah. outhouse, good. and a lovely yard. No extra guests. Yeah. <laughs> the Berkeley the the security system is top notch. Yeah. yeah strict no party policy. <laughs> you must ask for permission before entering, otherwise you will burn for ninety nine minutes. <laughs> oh no, I'm on fire. <laughs> Indeed. He stepped in the house without permission. <laughs> do you go up to the house? <laughs> Faye, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Is it a garden full of halflings throwing horseshoes? No. Then perhaps not. And I'll just corner of her chin, turn it. So <laughs> she's looking down the laneway and sees the house. Oh. Shall we? After you. Oh gosh. How far down the laneway is the house? Uh, the house is not too far. It's just down around the corner. It's just a real, real quick walk. You get there in about a minute and a half. 
Is there anyone else around? Like, in the around room? this house? Uh, no. A lot of the celebration was happening uh, away from this back street, but you can see that in a field down from here, there seems to be some sort of uh, chicken and pig farm. Oh. Is there a doorbell? There is not a doorbell, but there is a knocker. There's a little uh, wrought iron. Tuk, 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 tuk. Doorbell? Any... What decade is it, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I meant like a literal bell. <laughs> God, Todd. Um, are there any windows? Or there any... are windows, but they are shuttered up from the inside. Mm. I am going to have uh, one of my ravens that is sitting on my shoulder just go around to the back. Is it like just inbuilt like against a wall or anything or has it got like a surrounding yard? Uh, there is a small low um, small, low, uh, small low wall of stones that uh, surround the house with mm -hmm. a small little front garden. Alright, so I'll get one of my two ravens to go around like fly around and have a look at the back of the house. Ravens fly around. It's just a very similar sized garden out, garden out the back. Not too much is going on. Uh, the back door as well is closed up. Any more writing on the back? Like the same message John just written on the back? Or... Yeah, same message written around the back. And also, a big shout out to Scarlet Moth for sending out them gift subs. Oh. Thank you, Fowl. Thank you. Oh, my. oh dang. Thank you. It, it's someone's oh. birthday, so I'm giving presents. Oh. Lovely. Hi. Wonderful. Nice. Um, Massive shout out. Massive. Yes. You. Enjoy the cats. <laughs> All the cats. Um, so I'll just turn to Faye and just say, well, it's not going to knock on itself, shall we? After you. Ooh, the tides have turned and just... You hear? What? Go away! Can we come not in? A very pleasant way to greet someone. You hear her saying, uh, the the female voice on the other side say in infernal, "By the blessings of Bartor, I swear, if this gets any louder, before you hear footsteps coming towards the door, as you open it up, uh, or as the door opens up to you, just barely cracking it open." Uh, you see that inside there is a uh, peeking her head through. You see a, per, a lavender skinned tiefling. She has uh, one, she's got two horns, but in a unicorn like fashion, one stems up from her, uh, from her forehead, just raising up like that, with another one shooting quite, for, uh, quite further back. She has uh, shoulder length. Uh, dark grey hair and at first she's like scouring and mad as she opens the door and then she's taken away by seeing oh um a, a drow and a you and she then says in a in, uh, says in a infernal of the lower plains yes where I did or do reside doesn't really matter anymore now, does it? Huh. I guess I, I wish I knew that piece here. But do come in. Come in. I was expecting... Uh, oh, not not this, unfortunately. Come in. And the uh, door to the cottage opens up. And you see she uh, clicks her fingers and there's a little... <laughs> Uh, sparkle of magic that base that uh, that drops from the door as you come on in uh, you see in this lounge in this small little lounge area uh, there is a burning half and sitting by a tall back chair is a younger tiefling with same similar horns purples uh, dark, with darker purple skin along with short black hair he sits there and goes Mom, I thought you weren't going to take in visitors today. The tiefling woman goes, Oh, hush. There's no way to greet welcomed guests now, is it, Grin? 
She then turns. She's wearing a uh, very nice long dress, puff sleeves that then uh, puff shoulders that they go in, down into a uh, cape like sleeve. Uh, she, she turns and gives you a, dain- uh, a soft bow. She says, My name is De- uh, Dynasty Angle. This is my son, Grim. By the hospitality of our world, what can I do for you? Well, we were intrigued by the scrawling that you had marking your entryway. Ah, oh, yes. That. I am. They give you trouble in this town. Well, they treat us with quite the amount of disdain, and it's not something I am pleased about when trying to conduct experiments and studies and along the lines of illusions. But I might, a resident maid should be treated a bit more fairly than what these people give me. Yes, well, I can quite understand the feeling of judgment being passed before it's due. Uh, however, we do have pressing matters as to why we're even in this city. Is it the noise? No. <sighs> it's less than ideal, given the situation that we're investigating. Are you here about the missing persons? Yes, is there anything you can tell us? By gosh, someone's actually come to do something about that. My eye. I have been unsuccessful in my attempts to, to describe where my husband has gone to. He Your was... husband is one of the missing. Yes, my husband is indeed one of the missing. He is, unfortunately, every time I put up a poster or I ask the guards to do something, there is always a uh, silence that for that follows from the guards, and someone always defaces his poster. Mm. As much as I try. You see, my husband, he was, the, he was the last to go missing, but no one has really cared, because, you know, the humans would rather take their high horse and be the one true rulers. Ra- uh, his name was Ram. He had dark... Of dark grey skin, he had smaller horns than mine shooting up from out of his, his temple. Sha- you see he's shaved on both sides with a quaff of black hair. Now, he told me that he was going to the forest along the borders of it to pick for herbs. Now, that this was, this was four days ago. Why... Why he hasn't returned. No one has cared, really. And you're the first. Have you been to the forest to look for him? Between the celebrations starting, the guards, and warnings, and also from my son. Uh, I know I am a capable mage, but not by myself. Especially if they were to. If anything, if any of the ones from the forest the dwellers they call them but truly they are just elves living in their seclusion in their ways you see the humans here have taken taken to the the saying dwellers as a slur for them and i i feel for them i do i truly do i understand though the pay here is nice but Leaving is not quite an option, but I know Lady uh, Nando is offering up an award reward of 150 per person, but I do not know if if my husband is included in that, which which really tugs at the heartstrings. Well, I can assure you that irrespective of what monetary compensation is currently being offered, our main prerogative is stopping whatever it is that's causing these and determining its source. I, I, I hope so as well. A, a friend of his also went missing. 
on the on the last new moon. He he was a good he was a good man that elf. Valna. He's a uh, he's home is all but empty now. Has there been any pattern to the way the people have been going missing, or it's always been in the forest? It's always by the borders, or out in the fields surrounding it by the river. Yeah. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> but although the majority of them have been have been male, the the priest was the one who went to try to rescue Valen. With a contingents of a guard. Him, her, and another guard, Jabal Summerhawk, uh, did not return. Uh, Jabal was apparently taken, well, vanished really, on the edge. On the edge of the borders, before they even walked in. Does anyone see this happen? He was at the rear of the guard, and apparently he just vanished. Now, heading into the forest, they were... Apparently, the, the soldiers say they were overcome with distraught and grief before running away. He, I, I guess they weren't just as strong-willed, or the gold probably was just not enough for them. They abandoned the priest, and the priest, she stayed. I don't, I don't know any more than that. Except reports of them abandoning in her. How long has it been since you've resided in this town? Oh, I've been here for a year now. I've been here for a year. Since it just happened to be around about the time that... Lord Nanda just happened to die in the last feud with the elves of the forest. Lord Dreslin, stubborn fool, liked to hunt in the forest. Even though the warnings were all but given. There was a treaty made up, you see, after that between Lady Velrosa and the elves. Uh, a peace, a brittle peace. It wasn't till last month, I think. The first, yes, it's a new, on a new moon. Fauna was the one who we last saw him that evening, and he said he was just going out. He didn't go towards his home. As we were all coming back from the tavern. He went to the gates and went out into the fields. Do you know why he might have done that? I'm not too sure. But I don't know. They were always very reclusive in their, in their efforts. Very minimalistic. Never... Never made more than writing le writing the letters he did and sending them off with his ravens. He always came for asking for scrolls of sending when he could afford them, and I'd always make sure he had a good price. He was a good friend to Ram. Have you... Notice anything else unusual? Oh, let's see. Um, ever since the ever since the priest has gone missing, they uh, that asshole of an acolyte has taken up all of, uh, taken up the mantle and is running it like his own his own religion, really. 
running in spite of the tenants that were that of Lathander. Now I respect Lathander. But I'm sure that he holds Lathander in much higher regard than my Leaky has. The, temp the temples, well, it's tend to shift towards the sun god than the forest. Well, I think we've taken up enough of your time. Thank you for the information. You'll certainly hold no such prejudices as others may, should we find any one who has been missing. Not, not a problem at all. If you need any uh, arcane assistance in any manner, please do let me know and please do come to me. I Bradley. will open my door to you for to the both of you for this for this period thank you of course you see he the son just throw his hands up from the high back chair and go say ya <laughs> you hear her go Rin please good human and you head on back outside to the festivities uh, inside the walls are quite well muffled whoa Gift subs Heath going out all around. Heat Heath Blaze. Heath Thank you, Fred. Mwah. Massive love to Heat Blaze. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. I can't hype any better than that. Actually, no, I can because I have a command for it. So let's just throw some hype. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Put it up. Oh, wonderful. I'm going to have to get some uh, more emotes. I'm going to have to get some more emotes done. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so, with that, you have a tavern you could talk to. You have an entire day, uh, evening of dr uh, drinking to put yourself to through at the moment. All the stores are closing up. Uh, the majority of them are just half uh, halflings and humans. The one that stands out is, however, a uh, combination of a half-orc and a tiefling. Closing up her stall all by herself. Now, while the rest of the uh, merchants all have a couple of people with them to do their, their lifting, she's doing it all by herself. Dreamy sigh. <laughs> if you look from across the square towards a tavern, there seems to be a Fire Genasi, hey. leaning, leaning over a rail, uh, tank it in, tank it in here, and having a sip of something, and just staring dreamily. Take a fucking sip, babe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not about to help her. <laughs> I, mean, I have a strength of zero, guys. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna pull my veil out of a cloak and hang it from my two of my horns so it covers my face as we walk. I'll just say, I'll put my veil on too. <laughs> Dane, as your shift has ended, uh, you're heading from the watchtower after dealing with a lot of guards being drunk and making sure that they, uh, that your divine magic cures them yeah of... make sure they get home safely like <laughs> is there someone i can get in contact for you <laughs> where do you yeah. live Where is it? Taking what's your plan b you are you are honestly the medical tank medical tent <laughs> here as uh as you're heading I back I'm drunk. Just gonna take... <laughs> i'll be back okay as you're heading back from the guard tower to your to the tavern where your uh, where your room is located on the th on the second floor, you do spot a couple of strange strange creatures, uh, strange people. You see, uh, you see a dr you see a drow. Jesus Christ! A fucking drow! God! Yeah, the sun is going dark. Uh, <laughs> So it's going dark, so she, she's popped her head out at just the right time, you feel. However, the, by her side is this uh, tiefling-esque woman, wings, looking uh, with lavender skin, correct? A very pale lilac, yes. 
very pale lilacs standing and watching like lavender not lavender i'm sorry <laughs> no that's my mistake sorry and they're the most they're the most devilish two you've seen today Okay. What is going on in this town? Yeah, what the fuck is a, 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 a fire lady? And then things, <laughs> like, what the fuck is going on? Wait, does he, does Dane see Ophelia you at this point? Again, you do see um, a half-orc woman with massive infernal-like horns. Oh, well, what the fuck is this one? S- behind a stall, set uh, closing up shop onto the back of her wagon cart by her lonesome. <laughs> With like, no, she's grinding the missing people into meat for God's sake. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. right. Gone from just like, remember, drink plenty of water, get <laughs> safe, walk, don't ride. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <laughs> suck. I'm done with this. Wait, have you seen the video? Of, it's like it's like the weird cat, <laughs> and he's yelling about this weird cat. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, okay, so as soon as I see the two that are the two devilish girls or whatever the fuck they are walking along, I'm just like, I, I walk up to them and <laughs> I, 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 approach, I approach them warily. You step up towards the night stone where, just beyond where they are. Greetings. My name is Dana Van Burrowsfound, and I'm, I can't help but you are, look somewhat out of place here. Um, I've been trying to follow up on an investigation. Uh, one of my associates is missing an idol, and I uh, just wanted to know uh, what exactly you are, what your business here. Are you party goers? Are you hirees? Are you... are you accusing us of theft based entirely on appearance? <laughs> Well, that sounds like a yes. There, there are ways which one picks out uh, unique-looking individuals, and you two are the most uh, unique-looking I've seen today. Yes, Starving, we're aware of what discrimination is, and I take Faye's hand and just put a wing up and keep walking. <laughs> Wait, I was just gonna say, wait, perhaps if he is of this town, mm. we can help him in exchange for information. We have very little to go on. And I would like uh, to get this job done. My apologies. I I come across terribly rude uh, with strangers. I... It is a little matter to me whether you do this. This associate of mine is a real stuck-up prick. And... I just want to get him out of my hair, honestly. Do you know anything? Have you seen? Like, I don't know whether it's associated with the missing individuals. I'm I just know nothing of this like... idol, but perhaps we can help you locate it. If you can tell any, tell us anything about these missing individuals, they are who we search for. Uh, I know as little as you do, I'm afraid. I am, um, I'm just here doing my Lord Illumator's work for the sake of those living here. I I, uh, I go where help is needed. And um, I, I know very little of the missing people, but it is of great importance to me that I see them found and safe. Well, might I suggest if you know very little, then perhaps ask someone's name before even accusing of acts or their intentions of being here. Yes, you're quite right. I am deeply sorry. Uh, what are your names? You may call me Faye. Faye. And you? <sighs> My name is Asphyxia, and this is Equilibrium and Equanimity. I point to one black and one white raven on my shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> We're so edgy. I love it. <laughs> uh, I look at both of the birds and I'm just like, charm. They both go, 
Charmed, charmed, charmed. <laughs> <laughs> In your voice. Oh, jeez. Okay. Um, shall we take this to the tavern? I, I, I know a good spot where we can sit down and have a conversation. If you want to get a drink. I'll look for six year and drug. I expect we don't have a lot of information on what we're chasing. In Abyssal, I'll say to her, I don't like him, but you're right, and a tavern is a melting pot of different people. I'm sure we can get something from there. You don't like anyone. <laughs> you're, you're not, not too bad. Fine, we'll come with you. Very good. Follow me. And I, with a sudden like, change of mood, I just like happily trot on ahead. You happily trot on ahead, going up the stairs into the tavern. Passing by the fire genasi you saw before earlier this morning, who shook you, asking about a date. Yeah, as a uh, as I walk past her, I don't say anything to her, but I'm just like, uh, do, do you do know that one? No, not yet. You. I continue. Make a constitu uh, yeah. constitution saving throw there, uh, Sia. Oh boy. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> you drank? Oh, that's an 18, yeah. so I'm... 18. Oh. You've been living this party for the last week and a half. It's been fantastic. You have your eyes glued on this strong half orc who you've been basically uh you think you've gone off a couple of times and uh in an attempt to say hello but then other things have other things have popped up dances have come along uh it's like and that events have been happening you're trying to approach someone but then someone else comes up so you just circle back yeah and you go back up and he's uh, like the, the kind of like rom com bit where like someone tries to con like to talk to someone or confess, and then suddenly there's like a marching band goes through the middle. And, yeah, like... exactly that. <laughs> but no, at this point in time, as the square is clearing up, uh, she's all, uh, Ophelia, you are all done packing away your stall into the back of the small wagon you have, <laughs> which you can basically draw yourself. Uh, just by getting underneath the, the front arms and pulling it by yourself, it's quite strong. And there is a small well, one, two, yes. <laughs> um, I imagine the filly is staying at the tavern. She's good. Um, seeing that no, there's nothing, no large crowds anymore. She'll um pack up the wagon and then pick it up, and she can. She can definitely see see her at this point. Oh yeah, this is like hang, hanging over the uh, railings at the pub, uh, with tank it down, and just having. And she's just looking around but, and like trying not to be noticed. I'm not smart. I've got a question. Like, how on fire is a fire to Nazi? Yes. Uh, Let us know. <laughs> yes. How, how how on fire? I mean, I mean, she she hot AF, but also she's not really. She, it's not like she's constantly on fire. Her skin no, just constantly just, looks like, insinuates fire a mm. lot. Yeah, so okay. like the tips of her hair is mainly what looks like it's almost on fire. It's kind of like embers, yeah, and yeah. her her skin is mainly that kind of orange ember color that you. Yeah, like the warm glow kind of bit. Yeah, yeah. Mm. All right. Um. But she, she does almost start glowing a bit more when she's looking at the feeling. She's just. Mm, it, it's either it's either, it's something in the alcohol, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. So Ophelia will sort of come <laughs> like past, uh, sort of going past the tavern and sees it. I'll be in there in just a moment. Trust me. Just gotta put pack park this over there and I will be inside before you know it. Is that all cool? 
do you need a hand? I, I can, I can help. Nah, I got this. You know, half the time you don't need need horses when you have me. You know, pretty strong. Yeah, I can see. I mean, uh, you, you look pretty strong. That's a joke about riding her in here so much. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep would be proud. <laughs> she, she, well, the cowboy. Well, she, howdy. <laughs> you see, she pushes on the front uh, on the front bar of the wagon, uh, which draws the wagon with her. There's enough space between the back tray and the front uh, front bars that lead to the handle. And she just takes it and wheels on off at a walking pace, puts it all around. She's back in, in only a couple of minutes. I am so sorry about that. Now, let's get you that drink while you're next to one, at least. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm one down. It's fine. Well, no. it's the, the least I can do, and um, thank you for keeping me company from a fair. Oh, that's no... Oh, Okay. You could have just came over and said hello if you wanted to. Uh, I mean, I didn't want to interrupt your job. You were well. You were too kind. Thank you very much. Now let's get inside. Forget the stall, working and everything, and let's just party. I'm down the party. I'm always down the party. Yeah, yeah let's go inside. It, it's getting very cold out here. Uh. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's get inside. She's sort, of, she's sort of seen Dane walk past, like, hmm, okay, I just want to avoid that awkward interaction. So, are, are you cold at the moment? I mean, yes, yes. I it's, it's don't bit, know. Bit of a chill I... wind, I'm just, I'm just not used to this climate. She'll um, take her, her shawl she has tied around her waist and definitely yes. <laughs> put it around. It's like, does, is that okay? I love them so much. Jesus Christ. I didn't <laughs> think it was going to be like this bad. Like, <laughs> You love it. You love it. No. Take a step, babe. <laughs> Stop it. Get a room. <laughs> no. Uh, and we'll head inside. Continue inside. As soon as you get through that front door, you are ass your senses are assaulted by the mixture of high potency spirits ale and wine as you see a gnome do a backflip off a chandelier onto a table and an entire like contingent of dwarves just cheer in happiness <laughs> as uh some Amateur. very some very strange deeds are going on inside you see that there is an arm wrestling contest over to the side uh where two humans are currently going at it that's mitigated by a half orc with um gray skin and quite large tusk and he yells out come on boys you know you are going to try harder than that to beat each other you want to go up against me <laughs> get, on, get on with it already you see both the humans are there just going <laughs> kind of locked in an endless Same. battle uh you see ever since a lot of the a lot of the space in the tavern is completely packed up. Um, the only real free table, uh, free table, or free seats, is a table of three in the back corner, away from the bar. Um, strangely enough, it's that same dwarf you saw earlier tonight. Earlier today. <laughs> earlier tonight. <laughs> earlier tonight. It is that being. Black guy you wanted to avoid. <laughs> There's the t yeah, there's the only best seats in the bar. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. As the uh, as the three bards that are currently playing uh, switch it up to a jaunty river guard uh, to a jaunty uh, river river dance. <laughs> River dance song, River Guard. I'm um, too involved in my previous campaign. <laughs> uh, to a, has a dance now. It does. It does. Just our sandstorm. Um, the main area of the tap of the uh, tap room floor, just uh, tables are pushed aside completely as people begin river uh, having a great old uh, Celtic river dance in the middle of the place. Uh, being led by the dwarf uh, proprietor of the tavern along the bar as her three as her three uh, ser uh, servers 
go out and refill cups or bring back cutlery or plates as they can. You see the pot of a uh, hot potato stew go flying in the air as a, as a, one of the um, kitchen hands trip. Uh, can I catch her? Uh, she's across the room. But as she falls, someone uh, someone catches her, but as the uh, stew hits the floor, there is a... Ah! <laughs> Sexy. Sexy. Someone yells out, Carriage! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, Ophelia will sort of look over to the the empty chairs and say, "Well, unfortunately, we haven't got pla- many places to sit. So, um, I mean, I'm happy to go and sit over there if you are. We can do that. That's fine. You sure about that? It's fine. And she'll she'll go and sit right next to Dane." Oh, um, what are you, what are you drinking? Uh, I'll, I'll take fire brand whiskey. Gotcha, I'll be back in a moment. Mm. So you will go up to the bar and order a fire whiskey and an ale? Not a word, dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, Tarok looks up and goes, uh, looks down at you and she goes, well, as she's currently dancing her, her little heart out, she goes, well, you're going to have to excuse me for a second there. As you can see, I'm having a bit of a dance. Come join me in a little bit. We'll hear the next song, I reckon. I'll, I'll see. I'll see. Um, you don't mind if I just help myself. Ah, go on ahead. She, uh, Looks down, uh, looks over, and looks at one of the uh, looks at the human bar, bar wench and goes, "Melanie, get her what she wants." And she's currently got like uh, she's currently got uh, four tankards per hand. And it's just like <laughs> she'll just Ophelia will just like sort of brush her up and like, "Don't worry, I got this." And um, yeah, Ophelia will go behind the bar and just psst, grab the drinks. She needs and heads back to the table and like as she's like sitting down she'll be like i am so sorry there's no the no other places to sit i hope you don't mind oh no, no it's it's perfectly fine i understand um you just have to um mind us we're having a, a quite a dark conversation considering the jovial atmosphere ah. um no mind we'll just keep to ourselves very well and your hand see her, her drink Oh, thank you. You need to you need to stop apologizing so much. Hmm? Me? Yeah. Ah, oh, it's just being polite. Well, do you want to see a party trick? Oh yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Okay. She's going to start downing the fireball whiskey. She'll, will she like do it all in one shot? All in one shot. And all then, in one shot. Yep, and then is just going to click her fingers in front of her mouth and produce flame. And yeah, we kind of stop talking about whatever we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> there is a silence that goes over the inn completely, even up on the uh, second level from the stairs, looking down onto the tap room floor. As this fire just permeates above and over everyone, heads turn and all stare directly at you in amazement and wonder. Faith, go to clap. Yeah. There's more clap going, and it's just yeah, like it's a <laughs> big loud clap going. It's like wow, that's I told you it was good. something. The Kenku Man group that's currently playing, which is a which are three Kenkus playing on the uh, playing uh, as the bards, really start getting back into it now. Really bringing it up a notch at the wonderful display of flames that have gone over and gone the crowd hyped back up. <laughs> Just a little bit distracting for everyone else, but it was yeah. quite good. I'm not just a pretty face, and she's and then her elbow just slips off the table, and she goes. Ugh. She'll sort of try and catch her elbow with her hand, like underneath, like try and catch a 
of us. Like, well, I mean, you are pretty pretty, so, um, must be impressive to top that. So, uh, um, uh, I'm not, I'm not that pretty pretty. It's, it's fine. And I haven't I met many admit, people like you. I just, like, interrupt, like, completely not <laughs> yeah. the fact that there's, like, a murmur going on. And I'm just like, wow. <laughs> Dave's like, time to cock block. <laughs> yeah, <exactly>. Children! <laughs> Let's go, lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow, that was rather impressive. Um, I must say, I'm, I'm quite astounded by how How do you do that? Oh, uh, I mean... Just, just my condition sort of helps with helps with a few things. It's nice. I definitely did not learn that one back at the monastery. Monastery. So you're a monk. Um, was it's all flexible. Interesting. Interesting. You probably wouldn't have heard heard of the of the monastery. It's all the way back in Calumport. It's fine. Crossed many seas to be here. Yeah, I. I apologize, I'm not very well traveled, so I I, uh, I cannot say that I know the place. Uh, however, oh. um, considering you are, um, how do I say, uh, well traveled, uh, uh, have you heard any, uh, have you heard about the missing people going on here? Uh, like, do you have any news on it? That there's missing people? Yes, there's uh, five missing people, if I uh, go back in. I've heard about them. Um, the last few times I've come here for the mar markets, um, I've noticed their posters. It's quite grim stuff. Um, mm. I was here talking with uh, uh, Faye and Asphyxia, and um, we were currently discussing uh, what we knew about the the current season. What kind of name is Asphyxia? Is this, uh, Asphyxia? Uh, uh. I'm sorry. How many drinks have you had? <laughs> okay. Just two. It's just the just the reflux from the from a little trick. Can I get you anything? And I like go into my bag. I like start pulling I'm fine. It's all good. But I would like to meet this Asphyxia. Anyone with that name sounds like a lot of fun. You haven't met her yet. You still have the veil on, like inside the bar. Hmm? Asphyxia. Are you muted? That's oh. <laughs> one screaming. Yes, I do. Have the <laughs> <laughs> well, I would like to meet someone with that name. Maybe I'm just making assumptions. Also, hi. I'm sorry I didn't introduce myself. Uh, Celosia. Nice to meet you. Salosia, it's my pleasure. I'm Dane of Clan Boris Fan. Huh. As I said previously, these are, this is Faye and Asphyxia here. Um, and uh, you, and I like look up <laughs> to Ophelia. I'm so sorry. My name's Ophelia Roseworld. Ah, my pleasure. It's a pleasure to meet you. Um, you look like an interesting bunch of characters. Just gonna look around the rest of the table. Yeah, quite a bunch. That is just what I said when I spotted them across the courtyard. Yes, that's what you said. Mm. Not. I wonder if they stole from me. Huh. Uh, so we got uh, missing people and we got a thief. Yes, there was uh, missing items from the uh, from the temple. Was there a stolen heart? I cannot say that it was. Uh, I do believe it was an idol of some kind. Mm. Idol of, I forget the name of the god right now. But... My Leaky. <laughs> yes, My Leaky. And it was a totem of a unicorn. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, yes, um, there's a, the acolyte who's currently in charge there is up in arms about it. I, uh, I've been trying to uh, figure out happened to it and I wondered if it might be related to the disappearances. I mean I don't know why a unicorn statue 
be related to disappearances. But that must have been a really pretty statue. What I know is that uh, Mailiki is the goddess of the forest. Do I, does Dane know this? Dane would know this. Dane would know that. Dane would know that. Um, and uh, we are bordering on upon one of the a very interesting forest. Uh, All of these disappearances have happened in the forest. Hmm, so I I am led to believe there is a connection between them. Well, I can't say I heard anything about disappearance or disappearances. But I uh, I'm new to town. I just delivered some stuff for a big festival going on. And yeah. Yeah, about the missing people. Um I know about the posters, but other than that, I haven't really been one to venture forth. Um, I mean, I've got a bit of uh, fighting prowess, know how to handle a weapon, so if you need anything like that, I've been more than willing to help you out. I haven't got anywhere to be anytime soon. Should we go for a walk in the forest? Just got here. I would strongly advise against it. Near all the signs I've seen since I've arrived here have said not to go into the forest. I believe that it is uh, against our better judgment to do so. At least let us just, or well, at least let me just relax. I don't know. You can guys can do whatever you want. I want to lose in an arm wrestling match and perform and just make not a fool of myself. Because that sounds like a great night. At this point, Asphyxia is going to lean down to Faye's ear and in a whistle whisper again. Why do why did these people come and sit with us? <laughs> <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. Is the is that is that a gnome or a halfling still doing backflips and stuff? Uh, not no more. Now it is currently a human juggling, uh, what seems to be, uh, juggling bottles, and it's, uh, in through the stoppers is cloths of fire. So they're currently fire juggling at this point. Amateur. Can I see, like, as, because I'm not really interested in the conversation, um, is there anyone that's really? not really partaking in the festivities? Like, anyone kind of on the outskirts of the pub or like of the room or just kind of watching or assessing what's going on make a perception check oh, i don't know if i'm good at these i don't think so we'll find out <laughs> 21 Fuck. apparently you are 21. <laughs> you are when you roll well jesus all right, on a 21, you see that there is a another halfling standing by the back door uh, that goes out into the alley behind the tavern. Uh, uh, this young female, uh, well, this older female halfling um, looks like she's covered in dirt a little bit. Looks like she's been gardening for, the entire, for most of the day. Um, and has a flower crown through her hair, uh, which has been braided up into a bun. And she, as, as someone's phone goes off, uh, <laughs> as someone receives a sending message. <laughs> oh, sorry, my bad. I didn't put them in the silent. <laughs> uh, you notice that uh, they're currently leaning up and towards the door, the back door and are talking to it you see their their mouth and lips moving as their attention seems to be on and through the door mm. Faye in the corner and I'll kind of gesture for her to see this interaction as well So they seem like they've been gardening. I'd assume that they're like locals, or they've at least been working. Yeah, uh, you can look, definitely assume it's a local. Um, Affiliate, as you notice, their uh, 
asphyxia and Faye's uh, heads turning towards the turn towards the back door of the bar, you notice uh, Taylor Summerhawk. She's a elderly halfling, and a garner and 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 a potria. She's a really, really good family friend who has set you up for this uh, stall in in the market over this celebration. One thing you do remember upon coming in and, uh, when you came in and met with them was you heard their son had joined the guard, Jabble. Uh... But strangely enough, you haven't seen Jabal all day. He was all—he was a mischievous son and quite a quite a fun, fun, caring kid. But you haven't seen him for the majority of the day, even though you would have really liked to, and he would have loved to see you. You definitely. Is this... uh, yes, this is yeah. your failure. Yeah. Um. Like so, there's a. She's thinking there's a kid missing, possibly. Or, sorry, I spaced out for like the first part of it. I'm really <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, good doll. Uh, you see that up against, uh, up against the wall, this halfling, elderly halfling, uh, Taylor, uh, Taylor Summerhawk. Yeah. Is you've got her head turned. She's got her back up against the door, head towards it head turned towards it and is speaking and has her mouth moving as you see uh, Asphyxia and Faye these two people you've just met mm -hmm. uh, eyeing her off on the other side of the room um, Ophelia will just go I, I know that woman if you want me to go and talk to her she has a little little boy, a son He's usually around the markets when I'm around and I haven't seen him all day. Hmm. That might be why she's upset. If you don't mind, I'm just going to go and talk to her. Is there anything you would want to know? Well, if it has to do with the disappearance, it would be interesting mm. to know anything. Gotcha. Um, Ophelia will will get up and head over to the halfling and say say hello in uh, half is the language halfling yeah and the language is halfling halflinger halflinger <laughs> halflinger okay um yeah philia will just greet her in halfling uh, you take her by surprise that she's very fixated with, with her head turn. She's oh oh oh, t oh Ophelia, hello, hello, darling. Um, uh, oh, nice. what, what what can I do for you? You hear a on the door. You hear, what what can I do for you, sweetie? Please let's let's uh, go, go grab a grab a drink. You see her eyes are a little watered. Um. Uh, I'm fine for a drink at the moment. Can can I ask you something? Oh yeah, yes, of course, of course. And I don't want to bring anything up, but your your son. Oh, J J Jabble. Y Jabble. Yes. Is he? He's... He all right? I hadn't seen him at the <sighs> markets today. No, no it's uh, it's been a while since your trip. Uh, since your last trip, um. He's sadly he's part of the five. He's uh he he went missing on his first patrol. You see, he was constantly slacking off, not doing anything. So to teach him some responsibility, we uh, asked Lady Nandal to take him in as a as a recruit for the guard. But for first patrol with with that priest, he. He didn't come home. He went with a priest? Did the priest come back? The priest didn't come back neither. And haven't heard anything? No. He, 
not sending out no more people to check the forest. To not, we're not allowed to go to the edge of the woods and have a cry out for our boy. Me and me and Lalo are real sad about it. Real, real sad. It was our only boy. But mm. such a lot of long thing. Tell tell you what. I have some there seems to be some people over there that seem to be interested in solving um what's going down. Would you mind if we organized to meet up say tomorrow or the day after? And they can they can ask you some questions. I I think they're good. Oh, well, they seem a little weird, but you know I'm as weird as they get. So, oh, of course, if you feel like they can be trusted, then yeah, absolutely, I'd love to come to try. Uh, any options, a good option at this point. Can I can I buy you a drink? Why, yes, please. Uh, you know what? No, I think I think I'm going to call it tonight. It's been a big day, and I feel like a good night rest is all I need. You hear the nerve of her voice starting to leave. At first, she was panicked when you came over to her. Uh, that's begun to reside, seeing as a friend has come over to her. Ophelia will sort of sort of kneel down like get on one knee and sort of take both of her hands and say well I'll try try my best us well not so little folk and little folk uh, stick together damn it <laughs> by the fan that we do unofficial little folk but yeah I'll make sure I'll see if I can organize them to come over all tomorrow or the day after Try and get some more information. Unofficial or not, you're still one of our folk. <laughs> Thank you, Ophelia. If, if there's anything I can do, I'll be, uh, you know I'm around. Oh, and yes. Philia will give her a big hug, which is probably a really big hug. It's a really big hug. <laughs> a really big hug. You can, with your hug, you can assume this small, elderly <laughs> halfling. <laughs> There's just a little head it's, peeking out. It's just a scruff of hair on one side of an armpit. You might, someone might, someone rude might mistake it as your own armpit hair, or your own chest hair, <laughs> from that far away. Or if your hair was on the right angle, it's hair. Okay. It's hair. <laughs> it's a fluff. Okay, and Ophelia will um, head back to the table and sort of sit next to Asphyxia and um, say and just go. Well, your um, concerns were right. Um, she appears to be the one who first lost her son, Jabal. Everyone make a perception check. <laughs> uh, great. <laughs> this Fuck. Fine Ooh, and dandy. dandy. Hell yeah. Dandy. Right. Do my birds get to make perception checks as well? Uh, no, we'll just, we'll, we'll just <laughs> call it you. <laughs> Yes. Right now, it's too loud for birds to really give two fucks. I'm a lion. I can't see good. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and Sophia are here, like literally to investigate this, but they're just like. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like, wow, everything is just too loud. Yeah. All right, shout them out. Uh, Ophelia, what'd you get? 21. 21. Uh, Sia, what'd you get? 11. 11. Uh, Dane, what'd you get? 17. 17, asphyxia. Seven. Seven. And Faye. Five. Natural one. Natural one. You are so consumed on how this human is juggling, it's blowing your mind. You have the highest perception out of all of us, and you rolled in that one. Like... Yeah. Uh, first nat one. Wait, do we pan back yeah. to when I'll you got drink a, to that. And a six for your per perception and investigation, Todd? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm good at neither of those things. I'm good. We're, we're doing our best. <laughs> Keep it down. I can't taste my macaroni. <laughs> uh, See, so yeah, you're too focused on 
uh, just the entire environment of this party life, uh, being around all these wonderful, pe- uh, wonderful new people you've met. However, uh, many hot girls. Uh. <laughs> Dane and Ophelia, Ophelia mostly. Uh, you're the one. Who, after you've come back and said that, you look up. Uh, as Dane, you can also hear the sound of uh, hooves barreling past outside uh, outside the tavern as you were sitting by a window. Uh, the windows are open, but Ophelia, you see that there is a cloaked figure on the back of a horse riding like the wind in a startling rush as people yell, scream, and duck out of the way as uh, one guardsman says, Hey, watch it! This, Did we find the Nazgul's? <laughs> as this rider is making quite a large amount of haste, getting out of the city, getting out of the village. So is he? Is going away? Definitely leaving. Yes. If the window is here, the this rider just came barreling past on a horse. Okay. Cool. Um. Very in a uh, dark cloak. Is it? I want to. Because I don't hear about it much in d d is it normal for people, like, in villages and, like, in towns to ride horseback, or are most people, like, carriages? Uh, in this little village itself, riding on uh, horses are usually always taken to the stable, and riding in town is pretty much a no-go, since it's a really clo- closed-in small village. Yeah. Is the, the it, like, I assume it's cobbled? Uh, uh it's... It's the majority of it is cobbled along with some gravel that's been st- uh, yeah. thrown through, especially the back streets where the uh, horse was coming through was mostly just uh, yeah. gravel and dirt. However, you do hear the uh, the clip clop along the uh, cobbled uh, cobbled ground that then goes onto the uh, wooden bridge, and that echoes through the night. Do I sense, do I pick up on that Dane was kind of the one who, who heard that? Yeah, Dane, uh, Dane's head is turned as well, Dane, as you see the tail end of the, uh, tail end of the horse in this cloak, and as you lean out and over towards it, you do see this figure in a, in this cloak on horseback in a mad rush to get out of town, barreling people over. Uh, which way are they heading out of town? Uh, uh, there's one way into town, which comes from the main road. Uh, yep. It's basically the one way in and out of town, which is a large yep. draw uh, draw bridge. Mm-hmm. And they've just gone out and passed it through the guards, knocked over a sign, knocked over a person, and are now barreling outside and are heading into the night. You, um, did you see that? Yes, I did. That seemed um, quite peculiar. Um, do we all have, like, at least Dane, does he, he have a, a horse in the stables? Dane does have a horse in the stables, yes. Yes, okay. Um, that is something that seems worth investigating. Uh, there was a cloaked figure that just, um, bolted up mm-hmm. in his white ahari out of here. Um, I think I'm going to go see where they went. Are any of you interested in coming along? Have you seen this juggler? He's quite good. <laughs> does, does Ophelia have a horse, or was she like with a group? Uh, you'll by your, uh, you'll by yourself. You eventually met uh, met up with another group of uh, old uh, family members of the of the burrows. Well, not like the burrows, but of where you grew up, uh, who had left before. Traveling merchants like yourself. Yeah, but does Ophelia, I'm trying to get, does Ophelia have a horse or know someone who has a horse? You know someone who does have a horse, yes. You know that um, uh, Taylor would have a horse. Hmm. Is she still here? Where yeah, she she's, like? she's just over by the bar. It's like, well, I know someone with a horse. I can go, and, I'll join you investigating if you like. I just need to uh, grab my weapon. Does uh, does Ophelia look really concerned? Yeah, Ophelia's Ophelia's worried. Like she's been here a couple times, never seen anything like that. 
Are they well. leading towards the forest? Uh, you don't know. There are high high wooden walls with yeah. sharpened okay. spikes around the town. So as you see, you have a drawbridge. Would, can't would see. Ophelia know by travelling here a couple times? About? About whether that's the way to the forest. Uh, well, that's the way that's back the to... Orange. Yeah, exit, then, that's the only yeah. entrance and exit. But okay, to the okay. to the north of there, once you get off uh, get off the bridge, you know that there is a, a one large singular tree, and about a five minute ride north of that is the forest that runs up along the river. Okay. Well, looks like we have some investigating to do, I guess. Well, have you? See, it's gonna stand up and say, "Well, you two coming?" As in to to Faye and Asphyxia. I suppose. Closest we've seen to a lead so far, other than a missing unicorn, that is. It's not even a real unicorn, it's a fake unicorn. It's a unicorn statue. Well, I would say probably come with us. Dane's already left. Oh, okay. <laughs> Dane's already yeah, gone. Just, Dane's a rude bitch. <laughs> Dane uh, had, was like, while people were talking, he was like packing up his things and was like... Ophelia will sort of look at the group and say, do any of you have horses? Do we have horses? I don't know. Do we have roll? Do we have roll Chamberlain? You do have roll, and you run, You can ride. Um, I think you can change your familiar. You know, you can't change your familiar into a horse. No, but no. that would be the girls. Other, you can get. Uh, what's the movement speed of a horse? What's the walk 60. speed? Sixty feet. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, we can sh share horses. It's probably going to be yeah. the easiest. You can def uh, between. Asphyxia and they, you can also uh, ride back on back with uh, Rule. Alright, so, I'm um, assuming that Rule isn't my horse, but I am just going to go and take him. <laughs> <laughs> you can go and take and take that horse. Um, uh, I would have had when Dane left as well. Uh, Equamity, my white raven, would have mm -hmm. like followed him, just to keep tabs on him. Dane's getting followed by a bird. It's a bird! Um, it's a nightmare! Dane's plan is that, like, head straight to the stables, prepare his horse, and then wait there, like, a little bit for any <laughs> to arrive. Okay. And go, so... Yeah, Ophelia, um... Stables. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, Ophelia will look to see her and just go... I mean, you're more than welcome if you don't have your own horse. Sure, why not? <laughs> She'll grab her by the arm and just like go past um, uh, the halfling and just go. Um, we're borrowing your horse for a bit. Oh no! Of course, she suggested that one in the in the stables. <laughs> gotcha. And she's like running out, oh, like grabbing Sia, <laughs> and will stop by her wagon and pull, grab her her axe. So is running with axe in one hand. See her in the other. Just like a two weapons. Hey, drama. <laughs> two weapons. Yes, you can throw the monk. <laughs> no. Um, uh, get him. Uh, Asphyxia and Faye head over to the stables as well. Your horse is there in uh, in there also. Someone's horse is there, but it's right now. Some someone's horse is there. <laughs> It, it looks like its area has not been uh, caretaken to for a while. Okay. And you well, feel really bad for it. You think it could be used for greater ends, uh, for greater deeds than this. Yeah. So it's almost like the owner died. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dane is completely unaware if any thievery is going on. <laughs> Dane has been, is already outside waiting as the others have ca uh, come into the stables and just are coming out with a horse. It's just like, all right, we're off, we're ready. And then I will, instead of jumping on the horse, merge with one of my ravens. 
And now I am a raven. Oh. Oh. Dane, this white raven swoops down <laughs> from <laughs> above you. That as Asphyxia comes and stands next to you, there is a whiff of white smoke from Asphyxia as, it, as this smoke then condenses and joins around the, the raven as its wing sp- uh, span increases a third. And so does the uh, size of its uh, body and it's just <laughs> up into the sky. That's so fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> when the crows do that. <laughs> I don't know if ravens do that. So. Dead cool. <laughs> as, as you all begin to uh, ride on out of uh nightstone probably you go past the nightstone itself and you see inside it it's uh even in this rush it is glimmering under the nights the clear night sky as my cat is don't touch don't touch quartz <laughs> oh no touch the court i dare you <laughs> do it don't hurt my baby <laughs> <laughs> I'll as, give you five dollars. As you all go uh, galloping out of Nightstone down to the main trail, turn right and continue up the river, but you pass on through an archery field. You can all make perception checks at disadvantage. Oh, I love disadvantage. Don't we all have have dark vision? Yes, but beyond that is darkness and the night. I have a hundred and twenty feet. So do I. As uh, <laughs> from where from where you are at the one big tree by the trail, you see that there is uh, nearly fifteen hundred feet between. Uh, well, not fifteen hundred feet, uh, okay, more than okay. that. Uh, how do we do? Perception. <laughs> Perception. More I than got fifteen hundred. A four. Or a five. I got a fifteen and a six. What the shit? Oh, I got a twenty and an eighteen. Okay. Fuck. Okay, Asphyxia, from your height up, you can see that uh, the rider is heading towards the forest. You only get to see this through the uh, night, uh, from the light provided from the full moon overhead. Uh, as this rider is right, is going through the uh, tall grass heading towards the border of the forest. He's quite, quite the way away, but has left quite a good trail for you to follow. As you, the rest of you travel through the archery field that has been set up, that has been set up um, as the quickest as the quickest path to follow, you, picking up these uh, horse tracks, you make your way over and towards the edge of the woods. <gasps> as you reach the for, uh, foreboding limit of civilization, and I'm not going to use. That. I forgot I have advantage on Oops. Oh, in urban environments. So it's no, Australia. It's because of my robe. I just need to f- stop forgetting that I have ah. that. Yes, don't forget that. <laughs> As you make your way, way to the edge of the under, uh, edge of the forest border, uh, you see that a horse has been left there and someone has gotten off it and trailed into the woods on foot. Well, have we have we reached this? Yes, you've reached. Just... Yeah. You've reached the edge of the forest as you make your way down and over. Should we be doing some cross country then? Can I? Is there enough evidence of where they went that I can track them? Uh, make a survival check and find out. You can do an advantage because Asphyxia spotted him from above. Six and a four. As you begin to look around for trails, make a dexterity saving throw as you begin to trip forward. Eleven. Eleven. You fall prone into the cold, wet underbrush. As you look on over, you see that there is a uh, a steel bracer hanging out of the dirt 
with a skeletal hand that has uh, reached out that is kind of out of the ground and grasping, but not at you, just across, as if this was someone's last last resting place. Oh. I will, like, back into normal form um, and inspect it. Can I see how long they've been... Uh, you see that dead? it is... You say, did you say skeletal hand or just corpse yeah. hand? More really corpse hand, just with skeleton showing the... The flesh of it is quite decayed at this point. From what you can see, it is a small arm. A very small hand as well. Mm. The metal gauntlet around, uh, around the arm shows a blue, green, and gold uh, sleeve along with a uh, the end of the tabard that hangs Sweet. around the dirt. Is this what we've seen on the guard? <laughs> yep, this is a similar uniform to that of the guards. Blue, green, and gold tabards with uh, steel arm braces and greavers. Can I get up off the ground? <laughs> you can get up off the ground. <laughs> so I'll um, help you up. Yeah, can does Aphelia see this at this point? At that, I think... Um, Faye has tripped over. Do you look around? And yes, under in the underbrush and tall grass, there it is. Hand sticking out. I was just getting a closer look. Um, so can I how how decayed is the corpse? Can I roll over and try and see what killed it? Yeah, make a medicine check. Okay, it kinda went. Uh dirty. you can as well as six here. Can, can I look to see if I can see footprints or anything? Oh, I still have an advantage on, but my first roll was not. Okay. Yeah, I got 19. Okay. We know how this thing fucking died. Uh, <laughs> what did you get there, Faye? Not 20, she got. Oh, shit. Thank you. Yeah. I got a 22. 22. Okay. And all right. I'll get to you here in just a sec. But you can tell this uh, for sure a halfling. Or a child has been here for well and truly well and over three months. Yep. Around about the time this javel went missing. Ah. Uh, we don't know that. Do we know that story yet? Did she tell that us? Was, that was Philly. That was yeah. Yeah, but did you did you tell us all the details of them going missing? Or... Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Can we see? What? Like, does it have any wounds or anything? You see that they, uh, it's similar to a fr uh, to frostbite, but instead of the skin uh, showing uh, showing signs of bright red, it is instead deep, deep bruising that then uh, goes goes to more of a flesh eating uh, symptom. Hence. Okay. In the thinner parts of the arm itself, it's where the flesh has just receded so much that it's just falling off the bone. Can we tell what kind of damage? Like poison or necrotic or uh, natural decay, like going like festering, like curse or anything? Make an in make an insight or arcana. Make an insight or arcana or a medicine mm. check. Both of us? Either one. At this point, can Dane have gone down and be doing, uh, checking out the, the body and doing a medicine check to have a look? Yes, you can definitely. Yeah. Uh, God damn it. Natural one. Oh no. Who got the natural one? That was me. Okay. Uh, what'd you get? Uh, Faith? Oh, I thought it was only one of us. Right oh, now. that's fine. Natural one. Uh, I got a 20. Dirty 20? All right. Uh, Sia, could oh, you yeah, dirty 20. could you please make a survival check, please, to look for those tracks? Yeah. And you're doing a medicine check to just see how oh, shit, sorry, this I corpse is. Should I re-roll that? Or... Uh, oh, if you just take the first roll. Yeah, yeah. Top, what was the first roll? 11. 11. Uh, you do gently see a boot mark in, t in the mud that leads off 
into the forest. The next one is quite far in between. Looks like this person is trying to be as careful as they can. Make me a medicine check there, Dane. Oh yeah, so 14. 14. It is definitely a rotting of the flesh of non-natural means. Right, right. It's like an accel- accelerated stage of decay. Mm. Uh, you see that the muscles themselves around the flesh have deteriorated to such a state that it's like pork falling off a bone. Right. Mm. That is not as tasty as you made it sound. Nope. Um, a filier is gonna sort of move, move in and just go, um, did you find anything out? Is, is, is anything amiss here? I have some bad news about your friend. Well, I can, I can see that, but give me the worst. There's something that we haven't told you about what may be causing these disappearances. The reason why we're here. Mm-hmm. We've been sent to uh, investigate the influence of a, a possible fiend in the area. At that, you all hear a blood curdling scream from deep within the forest and that's where we'll end our session (laughs) no yes (laughs) i'm sorry chat if that was just a little bit loud but yeah um guys (laughs) thank you so much for episode one of Bl- Quart on court. I'm a piggy. <laughs> of K- Cam Piggin one. Hey, Kat, do you have any suggestions for our campaign name or for our party name or both? Yes. Uh, you should Let's suggest them either in the chat or on Twitter. Uh, currently uh, on the on lesbians. the polls, uh, Let's Go Lesbians is ranked one, followed by uh, the lesbian Cam Piggin. <laughs> followed by uh awesome but yes uh thank you so much everyone for dropping in tonight oh my god just thank Wait, we should be called four and a half gays hold on four gays and dane yeah. <laughs> but dane is gay but dane is gay dane's gay, dane's gay. <laughs> <laughs> All lesbians and dead. Ah, oh, some will work. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is Sandstorm. Sandstorm says hello to everyone. I'd like to also thank everyone for uh, coming in tonight and watching us for this start of a hopefully wonderful story that I hope all of you will enjoy. Thank you, everyone, for all the followers for staying in with us tonight. Uh, thank you. My gift sub. No, absolutely. Heat Blaze for all the gift subs as well. Scarlet Moss for the gift sub. Thank you so much. Sunrule for the gift subs as well. Welcome to the... You now have your own pair of nippers. Now the reason behind it... For the nips. <laughs> Hashtag for the nips. Now the reason behind the nips is because I also do a uh, model kit building section on Wednesday on Thursday nights called... Hashtag nip the butt, where the end of the runner is called a butt, because it's the it's the excess cutoff that we okay. get rid of. Yes. So, cont- so nips. So nips, exactly. nips and nips and butts. Got it. Yeah, nips and butts. So we're gonna snip a nippers. We're, exactly. So we're gonna nip it, and these are called nippers. But yes, I also run a D and D another D and D game called Dragon's Brew D and D on Wednesday nights at the same time, eight pm till ten thirty. Uh, Sunrills already had two. Yes, you have. Uh, and so, thank you all for being with us tonight. I'd like to thank our party, our brand new wonderful party, for being here. Also, Kitty Camp. Uh, thank you guys all. That was. <laughs> 
fucking Jack. That was wonderful. We will fix up. Uh, we will fix up technical issues as the week goes on. So hopefully there will be a little bit of a little bit of music uh, for the stream coming into uh, next session, along with a a scene Name, or hopefully. scene uh, scene map or combat map. Oh, some something could be nice. Let's 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 try making this nice. Yeah. Do you want to remind everyone where you can find us? Absolutely, absolutely. So we're gonna go one uh go around the table. We'll start with Iridian Knight. Tell us who you are and give us a link to your stuff in the chat if you wish. And we'll go from there. Prepared for this, but hi, I'm Viridian Knight. I don't really do much compared to the rest of the party. But um you can find me on Twitter at Viridian Knight. There is no second eye. Um, but if not there, I am always popping up in Dragon the Cat stream and in his Discord. So, uh, yeah, that is my Twitter. And, there, yeah. there are so many cats in stream right now. There it's wonderful. So yeah, Jack's given up on life, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he goes. <laughs> He's such a king. Lord boy. You can also join our Discord down below. Um, next up, let's go to uh, Jimmy, who played Faye, aka Cat Roulette. Hello, um, you can find me on Twitter at Cat Roulette, but with a three instead of it. Sorry, I thought someone was opening my door. A three instead of an E on the end, but I'm also just regular Cat Roulette on um, Twitch. I do art streams and stuff if you ever want to join and hang out um but other than that yeah just pretty much cat roulette with a three on twitter where i post most of my dumb shit and yeah that's, that's it that's wonderful wonderful you can share your link down in below oh, i have car i have character art of a on my twitter Yes, I believe I believe next time I'm going to throw up everyone's character art alongside their character names, just so we all have a good idea of how they look. Definitely going to do that. I'm going to throw more money at Jimmy for character art. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Hopefully, sometime within like it's probably not going to happen before the next session, but I want to have finished my art of Dane. That I'm yes. Doing because I have big plans for it. Nice. Uh, next up is Scarlet Moth. Hello. Hello. I'm Scarlet Moth, or Moth. You can find me on Twitter at that Scarlet Moth. I'm an artist, cosplayer, D&D player, shit poster, tiefling aficionado, all that jazz. Um, I play in a couple of other campaigns. Big one is for, for the Australian viewers. Oh, I can actually use Australian times for once. Uh, Wednesdays at 11 a.m. I play on Encounter Roleplay in The World Tree Burns, which is an ongoing 5th edition campaign. Uh, I play a Ravenfolk cleric. She is not a lesbian. <laughs> not all my characters are lesbians. What? I promise. Yes. Please. Oh no. Oh no! Oh no! Oh my god! Oh no! We would not let this go. Oh no! Uh, Australian internet, everyone. At least he has a lovely smile. Yes. Yeah. The internet's finally working out for us. So I will link. Uh, I will. I will link. And this uh, happened now, not like earlier. Oh yeah. 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 I'll link her Twitter down in in the chat for you if you want to go fo uh, go follow oh, Scarlet Moth. Oh, thank you. And next up is uh, wonderful Ma. Yeah. Hey. So I'm. Uh... <laughs> We've had a full drop. <laughs> oh, no. oh no. Oh no. I'm uh, Marv on Twitter. So that's four M's. Um, I go, but like I'm just like Marv in a bunch of places. Um. Twitter's where you're gonna see most of my stuff. I'm a 3D artist, um, so I do some cool stuff on there. Even though I take forever to work on everything, and uh, yeah, he's so, a good boy. Oh, she back. Oh, Wait, she back. back. Oh, she <laughs> back. You're back. My little boy. Here she comes. Got her back. All right, thank you. 
I was talking, and everything went quiet. I was like, oh no. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know where I got up to, but hi, I'm a disaster. I'm going to start streaming soon. NBN is hopefully going to be installed this week, maybe? So then I'll start streaming some D&D and art stuff and probably Morrowind as well because Eliza's an inspiration and I need to get back into playing. <laughs> yeah, so you can stream after me and then I'll raid you and then people just can keep watching Morrowind content! Yes! Uh -huh. Give us! Uh -huh. Eliza, at least you've swapped cameras on the stream. So you're in it on the stream. <laughs> We are one now. <laughs> this is what she gets for saying not all my characters are lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> We're no, inside no. each other's frames. Oh, the frames. Uh, not and... all my characters are lesbians, but everyone on this stream is a lesbian now. <laughs> you're not a lesbian until J.K. Rowling tells you you're gay. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> uh, finally, <laughs> finally, we have Eliza. Yes, hello. Well, goodbye. Uh, I'm Alicia on pretty much everything except Facebook where I'm Alicia cosplay, but searching Alicia will still do the same thing. Um, I am, now that I've moved house, I'm going to be slowly picking up cosplay again, uh, just in a big move and a big change of the year thing. Uh, I have not done anything in a while. And also getting NBN hopefully next week, so I will be back into a yeah. regular streaming schedule. Again, Morrowind staying number one on my list, but I'll actually be able to do online games now as well, like Elder Scrolls Online and, yeah. League and like stuff like that as well. So I'll hopefully be extend, uh, expanding, but uh, yeah, just having a real good time now streaming D and D again. Uh, awesome, awesome, yes. awesome! Welcome back. And I am Dragons of Cats. You can catch me on. On Thursday night, 8 p.m. for nip, hashtag nip the butt. Wednesday night, 8 p.m. for Dragons Brew D and D. Well, actually, 7:30, but hey, let's not get ahead of ourselves, please. And at 4 a.m. Australian East East Daylight Time for the Vice D and D on over on Tall Scores Channel. So, until that time, friends, foes, and familiars, remember keep loving each other and keep rolling twenties. Peace. I never roll twenties. I'm sorry. That's fine. We had our we had our first at twenty. Yes. That's right. Also, we should probably we should probably raid someone. Let's give someone a raid with so many wonderful people here. I was going to write rain. Uh, who should we who should we give a raid to? Let's go check out. Does anybody have any suggestions? Uh, you guys know hmm. Alchemy. I yeah, he's currently Alchemy O three. He's beating off in a dark room. Oh. <laughs> All right then. Sorry, oh, you too. <laughs> two guys beating off in a dark room <laughs> for charity. Yeah. Oh, for charity. All right. Well, let's yeah. go give them a raid and let's go throw up throw some raids and let's have the dragons raid so thank you all everyone for joining us tonight i'm not going to run over my kitten until next time <laughs> peace out Bye.